Hey guys, welcome back uh, to the second lecture. Um, let me go ahead and share the notes. Okay. All right. Uh, so let's uh, resume from where we left off. Okay. We are we are now in page thirty-seven. Okay. We've covered uh, the four relationships that are essential uh, for those in worship ministry and uh, uh, what can be the goals of the worship ministry. Uh, you know, um, this is my opinion. You need to nurture, create, and establish. Okay, you need to nurture, create, and establish. What it says is that uh, you know you have to create a culture. Okay, uh, if if because if you don't create a culture, a culture will be created for you. Okay, it will be set for you. So uh, it's very important to set goals for the worship ministry or any ministry that you're involved with, but more necessarily. Uh, more so in this context because we're talking about worship ministry, okay? Uh, now let's move on to the daily tasks of running a worship ministry, okay? I told you this is uh, going to be more practical, right, in terms of uh, from, from what we discussed, what we covered in the first two chapters, okay? Going forth is going to be more practical, what to do and uh, what can be done better, etc., cetera, et cetera, okay? Um, so, the daily tasks of running a worship ministry. Uh, what happens? Uh, you know, what are some of the things that goes on in a worship ministry? And uh, some of these points are from what happens in the worship ministry at APC, okay? Or, or what I am involved with, or what Pastor Jay Kumar is involved with. Um, so that's uh, just, to, just to put a few points here, okay? So <clears throat> let's look at a few of the daily tasks of running a worship ministry and gather a few tips from worship leaders, uh, you know, I've seen handle these things well. <clears throat> uh, first one is the task of scheduling or rostering teams. Okay, um, why is this is important? Now, in the next chapter, we I'll show you how I do it, uh, how we do it at APC. Uh, but here is just to show the importance of it, okay? The task of scheduling or rostering teams okay that this word roster will is not be new uh, to those who've been around apc if you're even if you're a bible college student uh, you know who was on campus you know you are rostered to do uh, certain responsibilities isn't it so that word is not new so so some worship ministries uh, run on the team model okay what does that mean uh, in other words they involve many people rotating between different leaders okay they involve many people rotating between different leaders creating different bands for each worship service okay for each worship service sunday after sunday there are different people involved it is not the same people uh, playing with the same group of people week after week like a band okay um, musicians get to know each other and get diversity in their experience so one sunday i am playing with uh, Thomas and Siddharth, the other Sunday I'm playing with Prince and Kannan. It's like that, okay? So different people are involved. Uh, however, okay, this is, uh, so just pause. This is known as the team model, okay? Where different people are involved in different worship services. But there are other worship ministries uh, run on the band model, okay? Uh, what does that mean? In other words, they have rotating bands that have a set schedule, okay? Each unique band plays together all the time, okay? Each unique band, what is a band? Band is a, a group of musicians, isn't it? Like uh, one acoustic guitarist, one keyboardist, bass guitar, worship leader, etc. So let's say the five, a group of five individuals uh, play together all the time. Okay, so like that, there are different bands. You have band A, band B, band C, okay? Um, so, but they play together all the time. It's not like the members of band A will sometimes play with the members of the band B, whatnot, okay? Uh, so they have a set schedule, okay? They say, okay, we are available for all these Sundays, 
and and so they go on uh, each unique band plays together all the time and builds musical rapport now um, now you will have to find a model that works best for your church okay um, so you may have found a model that uh, follows with the ethos of your community it's important that you find something that works for your church your community okay i have uh, there are benefits great benefits of both the team model and the band model okay in both models we employ auditions for the team in order to create quality music in either case okay this is very important um, in both cases we we do auditions again in the next chapter i'll we'll see about why we do auditions and how we go about doing auditions okay that's in the next chapter so be it the team model or the band model we do uh, we host auditions okay uh, i approach the musical part of our worship as a combined calling and skill set rather than a volunteer force that will accept anyone okay so you can't just put up uh, an antenna uh, sorry a billboard saying okay we are hiring for worship team members whoever wants to join worship team please come uh, you know uh, no uh, that you, you need to have a certain skill set uh, you know to be part of a worship team isn't it so that you can serve better right um, so that's one of the reasons why we do auditions but more on that later um, many worship leaders i know request rehearsal and service dates that people will be away a few months in advance okay so they can schedule around them so what is happening here is uh, i mean uh, once again there are members uh, who will ask okay what are you know the certain dates uh, what are the important dates that i need to be here for if you let me know i will plan my personal schedule around that like for example if there is a worship team retreat uh, if there is a worship team camp a camp just for the worship team members and what not important events uh, that they are required to be there if we give them the date they will plan their personal lives uh, you know the work uh, and sh- schedule it all around them okay um, in the band model often the decision is made 6 months to a year in advance around the band's participation so people can do their best to schedule around those times okay so um scheduling again it's not complicated but it's just to highlight it's one of the responsibilities the daily responsibility to uh, schedule people to roster teams and how you want to go about doing it finding the team model or the band model uh, see what fits uh, best for your for your church and your culture that's that's one okay the second task is the task of pastoring your team members okay the task of pastoring your team members uh, remember one the the last point we saw was to check to keep a check on your relationship with your team members okay so that's the, that should be another task the daily task first one so be proactive in your pastoral care of your team members okay what is the meaning of proactive what is the meaning of proactive or what is the re- or opposite of proactive okay you proact as in okay you uh, you say a group of five people are walking towards the door one person takes the first uh, initiative to to go and open the door so that the group of people can go in right so you are being proactive the opposite of proactive is reactive it's not like okay all the five people go reach the door and then then is like oh now we reach the door we have to open the door so that is reactive isn't it okay so uh, being proactive is essential uh, will be uh, is is important in your pastoral care for your team members okay that means you proactively you take the initiative uh, you know as a leader or as a worship pastor a worship leader you you message them you take that first step and say like hey how are you doing etc uh, etc et right um, so in my experience this keeps damaging fires to a minimum and encouraging flames to a maximum okay uh, encouraging is is always on an Uh, is on high while the discouragement discouraging moments are are always low so be proactive uh you know once again 
encourage one another, send texts, okay, SMS, send emails, uh, words of support on a consistent basis. Uh, you know, just a small message saying like, hey, I'm praying for you. Uh, how are you doing? Is everything all right? Okay, those are all just, uh, you know, a part, uh, a task of pastoring your worship team members or your team members in general, okay? Uh, and then finally, you know, take the time to ask the team members who seem to be carrying carrying a heavy burden, uh, you know, or what you can do to support them, uh, specifically in prayer or in scheduling. Uh, you know, each time you send a text, give a positive encouragement or strengthen a weak, uh, you know, heart that wants to give up. You are creating a culture of encouragement in your team, okay? If there's a person in your team that says, you know, I'm feeling burnt out because I've been doing this for a while. I want to give up. I want to stop, uh, you know, and whatnot. Uh, you encourage them, okay? It's like, hey, you know, say you can do it. I'm with you. I'm praying for you. The team is there for you uh, and whatnot. So, uh, those are all, again, a list of activities that you can do. Again, it's not limited to, but those are one of the things that comes under the task of pastoring your team members. Very important. Okay. All right. You guys uh, good till then? Cool. Um, right, thank you, Kiran. Uh, let's move on. So, the third point is the task of meeting with your pastor. Okay, uh, finding a regular time to meet with your pastor is one of the cornerstones of running an effective worship ministry. Again, going back to the four relationships that make or break us, the third one was a communication with your pastor, the relationship with your senior pastor. And one of the things that keeps it healthy and strong is communication, as we discussed, isn't it? And that happens when you meet on a regular basis, when you constantly give updates. It's like, hey, you know, this is what's happening in worship ministry. This is what we are, This is when we've planned uh, our worship retreat. This is what's happening with the songwriting process. This is where, this is the state Status of the album, you know, last week, so and so group of people met, we met in the so and so house, uh, etc. And we are planning to have a worship camp later on this year, on this month, in this date, etc, etc. Right. So a lot of things can be discussed with your meeting, uh, with the meeting with your pastor. Okay, so what is important or a takeaway here is that you set aside time on a regular basis to meet with your pastor. Or uh, you know, or to keep them updated. Uh, okay, that is very essential. And uh, what I have learned is that you know, keeping Pastor Ashish in loop because he's my boss, isn't it? Uh, you know, on a, on a regular basis, as as often as possible, uh, because he is busy. He has to. I have to take care of worship ministry and youth ministry. It's two things, and he has to oversee everything: the Bible college, the church, etc., etc., etc. And it's. Uh, he might not always have on his mind to check with me uh, on what's the update, what's what's happening with worship ministry. So it is my responsibility to understand that and to keep him updated and to reach out to him and say, it's like, hey, pastor, are you free? Can we meet? Uh, you know, and so and so. So, uh, yeah, I mean, there are a few levels of meeting that can happen. Uh, as Maz mentioned, I'm just going to read that for us. Uh, th there are two levels of meeting. The first level is the vision meeting. This kind of meeting can happen uh, just a few times a year. Okay, in, in these moments, you are primarily there to listen, absorbing a sense of the vision your pastoral leader has for the church as a whole. Uh, okay, uh, you can have quarterly meetings, etc. The second level of meeting is the service meeting. This can happen live or via email or some other means, okay, you can have a phone call. Um, this is a meeting where we talk about the sermon series coming up, the theme of the particular Sunday, uh, what choices of songs that pa does pastor prefer? That is, is there anything we can do as a worship team do to enhance the overall experience of the worship, of, of the Sunday service, okay? So small, small things like that. And I'm sure, I mean, there are so many things that will happen in the meeting you will discuss. But what is important, again, as a takeaway is uh, finding a regular time to meet with your senior pastor. Okay. Um, 
And the fourth task is mm, big one. The task of budgeting and paying for resources. Now, this might not happen on a daily basis. Okay, it, it depends on uh, the event or whatever you're planning for. Okay, so but it is one of the tasks, though. Okay, uh, there are administrative tasks that will always need daily attention. Keep up on paid resources such as online planner. If you are using an online tool, uh, you know monthly subscription. Uh, the sound tech, tech needs, mics, cables, uh, repairs that's gone for amplifiers that needs to be repaired. Are they being paid for training needs, materials, uh, you know, chord charts, uh, all of these things, you know, and a worship retreat, worship camps that need that needs budgeting, that you need to plan, you need to put a budget, uh, isn't it? So all of those, again, are another daily task. So if you are also in charge of sound gear and purchases beyond the basics, uh, I highly encourage you to either delegate the tasks to someone you trust. Okay, so um, and this is fairly a simple task. Okay, um, you know that you will have as a worship pastor or a worship leader to you will be expected to put a budget uh, and and make sure that you also pay uh, for pay pay the resources as well. Okay, this is one of the tasks. Um, and the next one, task number five, is the task of planning music for the week and year. Okay, uh, that's what one of the aspects of worship ministry is that, isn't it? The task of planning music for the week and year. Now, uh, if you're wondering why I need to, you know, if you're here wondering, I don't play an instrument, I'm not a musician, why do I need to know about all these things? Now, you might not be the worship pastor or a worship leader, but you might be the pastor that hires a worship pastor or a worship leader. And these are all the tasks that you can expect to be done by your worship pastor. <laughs> okay, so that's why I, uh, you know, uh, you will be uh, you are learning this as well. So, um, all right. So, uh, the task of planning music. Many of the most effective worship ministry leaders uh, I know are always swifting okay through the most fresh and appreciated songs uh, coming out on the radio or whatever okay the new songs that are being released you're on uh, that's not to say old songs are not important but you know just giving a heads up okay uh, being relevant what what are some, what are some of the new songs is being uh, being released you're uh, you're up to date with things like that okay um, there are tens of thousands of beautiful songs out there God does not desire for you to do every one. Okay, uh, listen to many, select a few, learn fewer. Still, okay, this is very important. Um, listen to many songs, select a few, and learn fewer. Still, um, your church has songs that are designed to serve their unique needs. Be attentive to this in prayer. Okay, know your church audience and cater to them as needed. Okay, if your church uh, is a multi generational church, okay, like for example, uh, you have people in in their eighteens, in their twenties, the thirties, and all the way up till the sixties and the seventies. That is the multi generational, right? So you can't only do songs like uh, Hillsong songs or Planet Shaker songs, it's like full on heavy. You know, you need to learn to incorporate hymns. And some of the old songs that they are familiar with, that they grew up listening to, the 60-year-olds, right? So what happens when we don't do that, when we don't cater to our audience, our older generations, we are robbing them of their heritage, isn't it? So it's very important how we learn to balance, uh, you know, when it comes to music and songs, okay? But, uh, but we plan. Uh, you know, nevertheless, we plan, plan ahead for major services uh, like Christmas, um, Easter, you know, select songs early and, and, and give it to your band members. Okay, so that's one of the tasks that we can do uh, that a worship pastor needs to do as well. Okay, um, then there are some wider pastoral work of the church that might not be directly involved uh, to the worship ministry. The task of sharing in the wider pastoral work of the church, for example, hospital visits, funerals, weddings, purchases, premarital counseling. Uh, but you're saying, you know, how is this part of worship ministry? Uh, remember what we learned about worship and ministry 
and ministry is nothing but love plus service equals ministry you remember that right uh, so that is how worship ministry is connected here okay the task of sharing in the wider pastoral work of the church okay uh, helping another pastor so you might be the worship pastor then you might help out uh, the children's church pastor with their you know when you have the time and if they need your help you're available to help them okay uh, so remember that a need doesn't necess necessitate a call for you to meet that need okay let's read that one more time okay remember that a need that means there is a need doesn't necessarily mean that you have to meet that need okay uh, there will always be need and you don't want to rob someone of his or her calling to meet that need okay if there's a person who was hired by the church to uh, to do you know to complete the responsibility of that need they can do that okay uh, because there will always be need all right. Uh, so, and because why, why, why this point is here is that if you end up doing everything else, like if you keep, you know, keep, and you don't end up doing your work or your responsibility, okay. First thing that happens is you're burning yourself out. What is burning yourself out? It simply means you're exhausting yourself. Okay, you you are tired uh, by within the half a day or you know by the end of the day you're exhausted your mind is fried completely you don't know what to do types okay uh, so get counsel from others on this if you are you know prone to rescue everyone in need no <laughs> basically the point there is uh, especially for us as indians i think it's very hard for us to say no Okay, we think that, okay, if I say no, people will get offended. <laughs> you see that? Uh, the connection? Okay. Uh, yeah, yo, what to do? This person asked no. If I say no, that person will get upset and offended. It's like, see, I asked him for help. He did see. He said no, he will not do. Uh, we have that fear of the people thinking uh, of us that way. Uh, but one of the strong characteristics uh, of a leader is to know when to say no and no. okay and it's okay to say no uh, and, and i mean you're not saying no for the sake of saying no and if you know if you're unable to you can't you genuinely cannot you have a genuine reason and a valid uh, reason legitimate reason uh, feel free to say no and if that person gets upset it's that person it's up to that person you can't please everybody isn't it so that's an important thing okay so now that is out of the way uh, let your other pastors and leaders know the time slots in which you can do other tasks and other uh, and the time slots in which you are otherwise occupied okay let uh, your peers your colleagues uh, in ministry know uh, the time that you are free relatively free to do other works that in a place where you can help them okay so that's basically it you know helping uh, other other ministry ministry area other wider uh, pastoral responsibilities of the church the next point okay let's pause uh, uh how, how's everyone doing uh, are, you all, are you all with me <laughs> any questions so far anything that you want to add so far like i said i want to keep this interactive so please talk to me Yeah, Kiran, you go ahead. Yes, sir. It's very helpful to say no, uh, and sometimes time is very difficult. Like uh, say no, other people what they think and all. It's very blessed for me to like uh, uh, today. I learn once again like say no. Okay. Yeah. Thank <laughs> Thanks, Kiran. Yeah, thank you. Uh, anything else, guys? Anybody else? Dave, uh, Siddharth, Kanan. Any questions? Any thoughts so far? Okay. Prince, are you doing well? Neelam, uh, any questions? Am I going too fast? Uh, okay. 
Well, I hope you all are able to follow me. I hope I'm not going too fast. Uh, OK. Great. Uh, so let's move to uh, the point seven. Now, just in case you're wondering what are these points, uh, are, it, it comes under the this, uh, uh, this category, the daily tasks of running a worship ministry. OK, everything that we've discussed so far, all the six points um, is about running a worship ministry, daily tasks of running a worship ministry. And now we go to point seven. Uh, if you're involved in worship ministry, it goes without saying that the task of honing your musical and leadership skills, okay, sharpening your musical skills is a necessary and vital part of growing in your worship ministry uh, leadership calling, okay? Uh, uh, I was I was never called to be the best musician in the entire team. However, I was called to lead that team. Honing my musicianship enabled me to write songs, create better arrangements, uh, you know, teach on dynamics, um, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, constantly upskilling yourself, uh, you know, on your instrument is very important. Uh, setting aside practice time, be it guitar, singing, or whatever it is, right? Uh, it's kind of crucial. And it is also, as you, again, if you are going to be a senior pastor, to encourage your, your, your worship leaders, your worship pastor, your worship team members to uh, practice and hone their skill, to get better at what they are doing, okay? Uh, our leadership skills are always in need of refining. Uh, you know, where new experience and new challenges can shape our character and call strengths out of us. Learning good leadership skills from those who are older and wiser and some younger and wiser can save us tripping over unnecessary hurdles along the way, okay? Uh, seeking, uh, seeking wisdom from people who've been there, done that, you know, can save you a lot of trouble, right? Uh, um, and then look for, uh, I mean, if you have the luxury if you ha uh, of, uh, you know, doing a course on leadership, uh, you know, try and do that as well. Learn about leadership, uh, you know, by doing a course, by taking a course. There's so many out there online these days. Okay. So those are all, uh, so that's the seven uh, daily tasks of running a worship ministry. Okay. Um, so it's, uh, doesn't seem like a lot, uh, but at the same time, it also seems like a lot, isn't it? Uh, are you guys overwhelmed by it? <laughs> I hope not. Uh, you know, God gives us the grace to go, you know, continue to do uh, what we have to do, what he expects us to do, what he wants us to do. He gives us the grace to endure, you know, day by day uh, as we make sure that our engines are oiled, uh, you know, uh, in a, in a secret place uh, by spending time with him in prayer and reading the word of God, uh, you know, he makes sure that we have the grace to go day after day to do what we have, we are called to do. Amen. Um, so that's chapter three, guys. Um, I know I've asked this quite a, quite a lot, but uh, any questions, uh, you know, with what we've covered so far before we go into chapter four? Give 10 seconds and then I'll move on. Great. I, I think, um, uh, uh -huh. yeah, yeah. questions? Yeah, Dave, go ahead. Yeah. Uh -huh. so, so, as you mentioned, uh, relationship with your pastor, the senior pastor, is, is very important. Yeah, we, we, we know that. Uh, uh, what are some key points to maintain that relationship? Uh, close enough and uh, uh, and as a team for for a church to go through with your uh, with your senior pastor right okay so sure. thanks for asking that Dave. okay um so uh, for me uh in in my opinion there are two things right uh, one is your one on one on one personal relationship with the pastor with your senior pastor okay i mean there are so many different ways you can build that you know like one of the things is that you meet him on a regular basis to give him an update regarding the worship ministry and whatnot. But at the same time, uh, it's also helpful that you don't always talk about work, right? Uh, all your meetings does not always have to be about work. Uh, you know, it doesn't always have to be about update, 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 what's happening, what is happening, you know? But, you know, you take a personal time. It's like you 
it's just like friendship where you know you take time to learn each other's likes or dislikes okay what's your favorite color what's your favorite cuisine you know uh going for a coffee uh you know just like a casual time where you learn about that person will also help right because we are in uh in ministry uh it's not just full on corporate you know if that makes sense okay it's not uh i'm not there to just do the work get paid and go off no it's people are involved isn't it ministry is uh is you are serving god and people uh with it is with people that you serve and you do everything so uh get to know the person of who the pastor is and he will also make that uh effort that's one thing you meet him on a regular basis uh you know you understand his vision second is you also have your senior pastor speak to the worship team like share his vision and his heart uh for the church uh, and his expectation of the worship team for that year as well so having your pastor speak with the worship team directly is also very very crucial and and is important uh we've done that uh, we do that all the time every time we have a worship team retreat um the worship meeting what not you know pastor has done sessions on songwriting for us uh you know he gives us a biblical perspective of uh, how, you know how we can approach songwriting as well so things like that will help. did that answer your question there yeah uh, yeah so that uh my other thing is uh if you, let's move on to the practical thing like um is i know apc is quite established and well managed but but our local church here is not very well organized and well well managed but what are some things that um uh, a worship ministry uh can be um, uh, managed properly or well established like uh, it's very hard to get budget for musical instrument and what uh, how do we communicate or how do we bring our needs to the the board or the, the senior mm-hmm. pastor regarding the the budget on the uh, for for ministry for sure. uh, worship ministry right uh, yeah thanks for asking that dev yeah um you know like you said uh you know we are privileged uh, you know Uh, at at abc we are absolutely blessed we and we don't take that for granted uh you know that god has blessed us with that we can talk about certain equipments and what not uh you know and 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 put a budget for it but it's not always the case in every church right uh it's 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 challenging so um this is where we once again you know go to this point i'd like to go back to this point uh you know in in relationship with a pastor it could be the board of directors in this case is a uh, consideration right um in this section uh the the board of directors or the senior pastor is considerate he's considering setting aside budget uh you know for worship ministry uh, for whatever that needs to be done uh, and uh and at the same time on the other side of the coin is is the worship pastor right so you are considerate about the position and the situation uh the financial uh status or uh, not status sorry the financial uh condition of the church like okay you are you take into consideration okay is my church able to a set aside budget for this is this important is this is that priority you, you know um at, at that time again when you meet your senior pastor you share your heart and say it's like hey look pastor you know i have this vision my heart is you know to take the team and the worship ministry of the church to the next level and there are certain things that we need uh you know to in order to go to that next level right uh, it, it could be you know a better sounding instrument uh, or investing in uh, in in a good quality microphones and all of that and then you share your heart is like why is that important is that this will sound better even you will sound better uh, you know and etc etc so once you've shared your heart and vision uh, now you know we need to be very respectful uh, again and be patient okay uh, be patient uh, see okay 
if it's going to happen, you know, if, if it can, if the budget can be set aside and whatnot. So it's a mutual respect there, Dave. Um, it's, you know, you got to, you got to respect the vision. Uh, you take into consideration all of these things be patient, uh, you know, and, but, uh, and it can be frustrating, right? Uh, let, let's, let's be honest, uh, you know, and, where you know you want to do uh, especially you know so this is coming from a very personal experience is when i was young uh, you know 18 19 uh, you know as a young uh, as a youth you're it's like on your fire hyper right it's like i want to do i want to i want to do i want to i want the best i want the best yada 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 okay um we uh, we wanted to buy a symbol for the drum kit for the church okay this is many 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 years ago uh, 2000s, I guess. And, uh, you know, I, we asked for the symbol, the symbol did not come, you know, years go by, the symbol did not come. Uh, and it, it actually made me very up, uh, upset and uh, actually angry. Um, you know, as, as, as why was this not bought? We needed, we needed, we needed, uh, for it to sound better and whatnot. So, uh, I think I've sobered down a lot now, you know. Uh, okay, but but the thing is, uh, I think uh, respect. Uh, you know, your responsibility as a worship pastor or a worship coordinator, worship leader, uh, ends with you sharing your heart to the pastor, your vision, uh, and and then you take into consideration the situation uh, of the church. Uh, you know. Are they able to uh, afford, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and learn to be patient with that? Yeah, that's. Uh, sure, but thanks a lot. Yeah, you're yeah. welcome, Dave. Yeah, I think it's the same with uh, you know, with not just the material things, but also the spiritual things. Uh, for example, uh, uh, you know, your church is, let's say, for example, your church is not used to prophetic worship. Okay, but uh, you as a worship pastor have this desire to, you know, spiritually go to the next level, you want to uh, see the culture of prophetic worship being introduced. Right? Uh, no, that's your vision, that's your heart. Uh, and you cannot be, you know, saying, okay, in one Sunday, that's going to happen. So next Sunday, I am not going to prepare song list. Uh, everything will be prophetic, spontaneous. So you don't prepare song list. Uh, you don't uh, You don't meet for practice. It's like, oh, don't worry. We're going to be prophetic. You tell your bandmates, you know, we're going to be prophetic. Uh, and then so, and then there is the media team, you know, who has to work on the songs, present. And this is like, what is the song list? Like, no song list. Um, what do you mean there's no song list? No, yes, we're going to go spontaneous and prophetic. Oh, what do you mean? Uh, <laughs> and then you start singing. Uh, and, you know, then there is no lyrics uh, projected for the congregation. And the congregation is lost. Okay, what is happening? the song lyrics are not there uh, right I, you get what I'm saying isn't it uh, so it's a step-by-step -step process you have to be patient and if you're introducing something new uh, culture to the church uh, you take it you take baby steps you're patient you know you introduce new songs uh, you know very slowly you don't do three four new songs in one Sunday and the church is lost so uh, every time there's you, you desire a shift in culture or you desire uh, something new to be done in church, uh, be patient with it. Uh, you know, your pastor will see that, the church will recognize that and uh, will partner with you. So, um, and, uh, and, and take everything into prayer. Take everything into prayer, you, you know, take it to God in prayer and, uh, and he'll see the desires of your heart and he'll honor that. Yeah, is that clear, guys? I mean, everybody, anybody else? Uh, anything else? Okay. Tanan, are you okay? Any questions? Anything that you want to add? Neelam, are you okay? Yeah. Prince Siddharth. Okay. 
All right, guys. Uh, let's let's move on then. Okay. Uh, so that's chapter three. Uh, it's just an introduction to worship ministry. Uh, everything, uh, the daily tasks of running a worship ministry is explained in this chapter. And now, uh, in chap, we step into chapter four. Uh, we see the worship, the organizational aspects of worship ministry, how it's organized uh, at APC. Okay, and uh, again, you can take the principles, uh, ideas from this and go in and uh, put into practice in, in your own churches and whatnot. Okay, so worship team, the structure of the worship team, um, the benefits of a team. In a team, there is safety or help. Remember, it's not a one-man show like we discussed. The team supports the leader. There is power and unity in a team. And effectiveness of the ministry will be multiplied and enhanced through the joint efforts of a team functioning in unity under that leadership. Okay, The effectiveness of the ministry will be multiplied and enhanced through the joint efforts of a team functioning in unity under that leadership. Okay. Um, this is quote by Ralph Mahoney. It says, a lone ranger will not get much done in this world, but a man who can organize others to work for a common vision, a man who can build a team, can do a significant work of the Lord's kingdom. A vision that can be clearly communicated is the critical thing in rallying men and resources for achieving the work the Lord wants done. Okay, so basically it just says the importance of teamwork and team is important. So one puts a thousand to flight, two puts 10,000 to flight, it just multiplies incredibly. Okay. So now that we know the importance of the team and this is how it's organized. Okay, I'm sure you've seen this table in the past. Uh, I'm not sure if you have, but this is how it is. So you have the senior pastor and uh, we report the worship pastor, uh, the associate worship pastor, me and Pastor Jay Kumar report to Pastor Ashish. And um, there are these bunch of other sub teams, uh, you know, that uh, that we oversee. So there's the band, the worship team members. OK, um, we have 50 or almost 60 uh, worship team members um, at ABC. Uh, and then all, we are in touch with the sound team as well. They keep us in the loop. They report to us on what's happening. And then there is the media team who does the slides, the LCD projection, the lyrics projection, whatnot, right? And, you know, the singers. Um, so singers and band, pretty much the same. So, and then there's the congregation. So this is how, uh, you know, we are organized at APC. Okay, just to give us an idea. So you have the senior pastor, the worship pastor, and the band, sound team, um, the media team, singers, and then you have the congregation. Cool. Um, so let's see, what is the role of the pastor, of the senior pastor, okay? The pastor is the one who ultimately is responsible for God to God for the church. So the worship team comes under his pastoral oversight. Okay, pastor is the one who, uh, who is ultimately responsible to God. He's accountable to God. And so worship team comes under his supervision. Okay, number one, he provides general vision, direction, and motivation. One of the roles of the pastor is that he provides vision direction and motivation he shares his goals for worship with the with the team through the worship pastor sometimes gives the worship pastor the plan of messages for the year so that the team can prepare appropriate songs okay every time uh, when pastor ashish wants to do a certain song to a certain series he emails me or pastor jakes uh, and then we kind of organize it uh, we get in touch with the band who is leading uh, worship in all the different locations north south east west central we tell them he's like hey guys a pastor would like for us to do this song in every location so can you do this so example right that's one he provides vision um, his role as an example Second, the pastor is the key to the worship ministry. He must be an example of a worshiper before the congregation. 
a worshipping pastor will birth a worshipping church. A non-worshipping pastor will never have a worshipping church, no matter how talented the worship leader may be. Mm. It, uh, he leads much more by example in this area than by preaching. He can preach about worship, but will see no response from the people. So uh, living by example is the key, is another important role uh, you know, of the pastor. Uh, we see that in Second Samuel chapter six, uh, King David is a good model uh, for pastors to follow. Right? Uh, he danced, he worshipped, uh, he was undignified before the king. Right, uh, and finally, uh, and I'll conclude with this point: the role of a pastor is that his role to teach the congregation on worship. Okay, yes, good that uh, that he's uh, that his life speaks as an example, uh, his role as an example shows that he is a worshiper. And it's also important that he teaches the congregation on worship. The pastor should teach on worship. A uh, reason why we worship biblical expressions of worship, uh, etc. cetera, okay? Um, in the church on a regular basis, so the congregation can receive the revelation on worship. Okay, so these are the, this, uh, once again, the, the role of a pastor doesn't end with those three points, okay? Don't get me wrong. It's not what I am saying. But uh, in, in the context of our discussion of what we are learning in worship ministry, uh, those are the three key important points, okay? Um, so, uh, and we'll, we'll stop here, guys. We'll, uh, we'll stop and uh, we'll resume uh, next week, okay? Okay. Uh, I hope there was something that you were able to take, learn, uh, you know, and you'll be able to apply it in your own ministry, uh, you know, where God has placed you. And we will continue to learn more practical aspects of worship ministry in the classes to come. Yeah? Is that cool? Great. I'll uh, stop the recording now. Uh, thank you all for joining for today's session. Uh, God bless you. Stay safe. Um, I'll see you all next week. Bye-bye. Thank you.